Hi, how's it going, everybody? Max here, and welcome back to this second episode of the five part series on how to build the game Flappy Bird using Python and Pygame. All the individual parts of this series, as well as the code that I use, is going to be linked down in the description below, so make sure to check it out if you want. If this video helps you out and you would like to see more of these types of videos on my channel, then let me know by hitting the like button down below. My aim for this video is to show you guys how we can add the bird to our game. Now there are three components to this bird that we're going to cover one by one. The first component is the animation of the bird. Yeah, we want to see it flap its wings, so that's what we're going to do first. The second thing we want to do is we want to add the flap, so the jump you can call it. The third thing that we want to do is we want to have the bird turn in that direction that it is moving in. So these three components are what we're going to be focusing on in this video, so let's jump right in. So let's talk about the animation. As you can see here, we have three images of the bird, and each of these images shows the bird with a different wing position. All we need to do in order to animate the bird is show these individual images sequentially. Since these three images are stored within the bird underscore images variable, all we need to do is loop through the array. To loop through this array, all we need is a number which increases and then resets again. So we're going to introduce the variable called image index, and we're going to be incrementing it every time the update function is called for the bird. Since the update function runs really quickly, we're not going to be changing the bird image on every increment of one. Instead, we're going to be changing the image of the bird every 10 increments of the index. So when the image index is between 0 and 9, we're going to be showing the first image with index 0. When the index is between 10 and 19, we're going to be showing the second image with the index 1. And when the index is between 20 and 29, we're going to be showing the third image with the index 2. And as soon as we reach a value of 30, we need to make sure that we reset the image index back to zero. And this process is going to go on and on, and it will help us animate the bird. One question which you might ask yourself is, how can we have 30 indices, but at the same time only have three images? How do we map the 30 onto the three? And this is quite a simple problem to solve, because all we need to do is we need to floor divide the image index by 10. Floor division is a very simple operation. All it does is divide two values by one another and then round down. So if we take the values zero to nine as an example, if we floor divide any value between zero and nine by 10, we get zero. Similarly, if we floor divide any value between 10 and 19 by 10, then we get the value one. So back in the editor, we're going to make a couple of changes to our code. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another game variable. And this is going to be called the bird start position. And it's going to contain the X and Y coordinates of the starting position of our bird. Then we're going to create a new class called bird. And it is going to inherit from pygame.sprite.sprite. The very first function in this class is going to be the init function. And the first thing we're going to do within this init function is we're going to initialize the superclass. After that, we're also going to set self.image equal to the very first bird image in the bird images array. And because we love working with pi game rectangles, we're going to set self.rect equal to self.image.getRectangle. Once we've created this rectangle, we're going to set self.rectangle.center, so the center of this rectangle, equal to the bird start position that we made just a moment ago. Then we're going to create the image index, which we talked about earlier. So remember, this is going to be the number which loops through the bird images and animates our bird. So now that we've completed the init function, next up is the update function. Within the update function, I'm going to add a comment, animate bird, because the code underneath is going to be responsible for animating the bird. First up, we're going to be incrementing the image index by one every time the update function is called. And as we've already discussed before, we're going to be resetting the image index every time it reaches a value of 30. So when it reaches 30, we're going to be resetting it to the value of zero. Then we're going to set the image and we're going to pass in the image index floor divided by 10 into the array. There are just a few more things that remain to be done before we can see an animated bird on our screen. 
First off, we're going to go to the main function and we're going to instantiate the bird. So let's create a variable called bird and set it equal to pygame.sprite.groupsingle. And to this group single, we're going to add an instance of the class bird by writing bird.add and in brackets, we're going to write bird. So what we've done here is we've created an instance of the class bird and added it to the group single. Finally, we need to make sure that we call the draw function on the bird as well as the update function on the bird. And once we've done both of those things, we can go ahead and run and you'll see that we have the bird on our screen and it's animated. Moving forward quickly, we're now going to talk about the jump of the bird, or what I like to call the flap of the bird. Before we confuse ourselves by looking at the code, let's try and understand the concept behind this jump first. And for this purpose, I have drawn up an image over here in my paint canvas. You can see on the vertical axis, we have the Y coordinate, and on the horizontal axis, we have the X coordinate. Now remember that in Pygame, the top leftmost pixel of the canvas is the point zero zero. The value of Y increases the further we go down, and the value of X increases the further we move to the right. The Y coordinate of the bird is what we're going to be interested in, because that is exactly what moves the bird up and down at the screen. More specifically, we're going to be adding a variable called velocity to the Y coordinate of the bird. So let's imagine that we press the space bar. Every time we press the space bar, we want to have the bird jump, or in other words, flap. Whenever that happens, we're going to be setting the velocity equal to minus seven. And now when we add this negative velocity value to the Y coordinate of our bird, it is going to be moving up the screen. But at the same time, when it moves up the screen, we want it to decelerate. We want this movement to become slower and slower so that the bird comes down again due to the pull of gravity. In order to do that, we're simply going to be adding 0.5 to the velocity value on every while loop iteration. So on the eighth update of the while loop, when we've added 0.58 times, we're going to be at a velocity of minus three. Then after 14 loops, we're going to have added the value of 0.5 14 times to our initial velocity of minus seven. So we're going to have a velocity of zero. Now, if we continue adding 0.5 beyond this point, the velocity is going to turn positive and we're going to be adding positive values to our Y coordinate of the bird. This is going to make the bird move down on our screen. And then if we continue on like this, after 28 iterations of the while loop, when we've added 0.5 28 times to the initial value of minus seven, we end up with the starting velocity of seven again. But this time the sign is positive, which means it's moving us downwards. So that means when our bird moves up the screen, the value of the velocity, the vel value over here is going to be decreasing. And at the very tippity top of the jump, the velocity value is going to have a value of zero. But we're going to continue adding the value of 0.5 to the velocity value. And that means the velocity values become positive again. And we're adding positive values to the Y coordinate of the bird, which means it's going to start moving down again. So in summary, if we have velocity values between minus seven and zero, we are adding negative numbers to the Y coordinate of the bird, which makes it move up. And similarly, when we have velocity values between zero and seven, we're adding positive values to the Y coordinates of the bird, and that makes the bird move downwards. So back in the editor, the first change we're going to make is we're going to add the velocity variable and the flap variable to the init function in the bird class. The velocity variable is the one that we talked about just a moment ago. And the flap variable, on the other hand, is going to help us prevent the player from spamming the jump button. Further below in the update function, we're going to add the user input as an argument. Because over here, we want to check for whenever the user presses the space bar, which is when we execute the flap, or in other words, the jump. Then under the comment gravity and flap, we're going to be incrementing the value of self.velocity by 0.5 every time the update function is called. And remember, this update function is called on every iteration of the main loop. In addition, we don't want the bird to move down our screen faster than seven pixels 
every while loop iteration. So we're going to say that if the self dot velocity is greater than seven, we're going to set the self dot velocity equal to exactly seven. We also want to prevent the bird from falling below the ground level. So we're going to write that if the y coordinate is lower than 500, then only in that case do we add the velocity to the y coordinate of the bird. Next, we're going to add another if statement, which is going to state that if self.velocity is equal to zero, then we're going to set self.flap equal to false. Now remember from earlier that self.velocity is equal to zero at the climax, or the highest point of the jump. So by adding this if statement, we can make sure that the user cannot execute another flap or another jump before the highest point of the bird is reached. Now let's take care of the user input. We want to execute a jump whenever the user presses the spacebar. But at the same time, there are a couple of prerequisites that need to be met for the user to be able to execute this jump. So it's not enough to press the spacebar, the flap variable also has to be false. And in addition to that, we also want the Y position of the bird to be below the top of the window. So if these prerequisites are met and we press the spacebar, we want to turn the variable self.flap to true. And we want to set the self.velocity variable equal to minus seven. There are two final things that remain to be done for our bird to have the jumping mechanic. First, within the main loop, we're going to be adding another variable and we're going to assign it the value of the user input. And second, we're going to call the update function on the bird and within this update function, we pass in the user input, which we just created. So now when I run this, you can see that our bird has the flapping mechanic. It can jump up and down. The last thing that we're going to be adding in this video is we're going to make the bird turn up and down to make it look less stiff. All we need to do in order to accomplish this is add this transform function to the image. And now you'll be able to see that the bird faces upward when it flies up and downward when it flies down. All right, so we're gonna leave it here for this episode. If this video helped you out, then make sure to leave a like on this video. It helps out a lot. And in the next video, we'll be checking out how to add the pipes to the game.